here's what's coming up on The World Today. Well, German doctors treating the Russian opposition leader arrive at the conclusion that he was poisoned. Twelve people die as storms Marco and Laura hit the Caribbeans. Plus, the U.S. Republican Congressional Convention begins today. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us today. I'm Joker Rogers in Lagos. The speculation is over concerning whether or not the Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny was poisoned in Russia. Doctors attending to him at the Charity Hospital have released a statement saying that clinical evidence suggests an intoxication through a substance belonging to the group of inhibitors. They are also known as anticholinesterase. They are chemicals that prevent the breakdown of the neurotransmitter or uh, botrychlorine. Acetylcholine can be then build up, causing a jam in the nervous system and the muscles continue to remote uncontrollably. The hospital also says Navalny's condition is serious but not life-threatening. Navalny had fallen ill on an internal Russian flight on Thursday. Video appeared to show him writing in agony on the flight from Tomsk in Siberia to Moscow. His supporters suspect some poison was placed in a cup of tea he drank at the airport. Russian doctors had earlier said no poison had been found in his body and suggested a metabolic disorder caused by low blood sugar. So let's turn our attention uh, to the coverage of the coronavirus pandemic. The World Health Organization says there are 172 countries engaging with health agency-led COVAX plan designed to ensure equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines, but that more funding is urgently needed and that now is the time for countries to make binding commitments. Let's take a look. Member States requesting them to join the vaccine arm of the ACT Accelerator. I'm pleased to announce that as of today, 172 countries are now engaging with the COVAX Global Vaccines Facility, which has both the largest and most diverse COVID-19 vaccine portfolio in the world. At present, there are nine vaccines that are part of this dynamic portfolio which is constantly being reviewed and optimized to ensure access to the best possible range of products. Even now, discussions are ongoing with four more producers, and a further nine vaccines are currently under evaluation for the longer term. Good afternoon. Hi, it's Monique. Um, my question is, what is the way... Most importantly, it is the mechanism to enable a globally coordinated rollout this is in the interests of all countries, even those that have invested with individual manufacturers independently. We're working with vaccine manufacturers to provide all countries that join the effort timely and equitable access to all vaccines licensed and approved. Well, France says it will soon be imposing a 14-day quarantine on all arrivals from the UK to mirror the restrictions imposed by the British government earlier this month on people arriving from France. The French junior minister for European Affairs says the measures will be decided over the next few days. This comes as global COVID-19 cases top 23 million and the death toll exceeding 800,000. Here's the global update. South Korea has mandated residents in the capital Seoul to wear face masks in both indoor and outdoor public places for the first time as the country battles a surge in coronavirus cases. Centered in the deadly populated city region, it was only back in May that the government had ordered that face masks be worn on public transport and taxis. But the latest spike in cases has officials worried 
that the country may need to impose its highest level of social distancing. Mexico has the third highest number of COVID-19 related deaths after the United States and Brazil. But President Andres Manuel López Obrador says the pandemic is waning after the weekly COVID-related death toll for week 33 continued on a downward trend. The president made the announcement a day after the total death toll in the country surpassed the 60,000 mark. Spain is also mulling over restrictions on mass mobility among autonomous communities as COVID-19 surges across the country. The country had reported 386,054 confirmed COVID-19 cases on Friday, with the total fatalities reaching 28,838. Madrid, the capital, is still the region with the highest number of cases. It experienced five rounds of local spikes in COVID-19 infections on Saturday with 74 confirmed cases, 217 close contacts and one death. Italy has begun the first human trial of its own potential COVID-19 vaccine as new cases in the country continue to rise steadily. The experimentation developed by a team of Spallanzani researchers and clinicians in collaboration with Ray Thera, an Italian biopharmaceutical company, will be carried out on 90 volunteers divided into two age groups, 45 between 18 and 55 years, and the same number over the age of 65. Preliminary results of the trial are expected by the end of 2020. In Ghana, the World Health Organization is providing support to the health service in their efforts to continue providing essential medical services to the population. Health worker safety is a critical component in the COVID-19 response, as more than 10,000 health workers in 40 African countries have contracted the virus since the pandemic began. People were afraid to go to health services thinking that it is an, uh, a place where they may actually um, get into contact with people with COVID. So because of that fear, even people who needed to access um, health services were fearful to, fearful to go. Finally, people across India are finding ways to cope with the COVID-19 pandemic as the government looks to start reopening the country after months of lockdowns. As at Sunday, the number of confirmed cases in India reached over 3 million, the world's third highest after the United States and Brazil. Away from the COVID-19 pandemic, at least 12 people have died as two storms, Laura and Marco, sweep through the Caribbean. They both brought high winds and rough seas, leaving at least nine people dead in Haiti and another three in the Dominican Republic. Heavy rains also battered Cuba and Puerto Rico on Sunday. Marco is expected in the U.S. state of Louisiana today, but Laura expected on Thursday. Forecasters say that Laura swinging towards Louisiana could be the first time in recorded history that the state has been hit by two back-to-back -back hurricanes. Well, there are more stories coming in from the United States today. One of the longest-serving members of the Trump administration, White House advisor Kellyanne Conway, has resigned from the administration and will be leaving the White House August ending. Now, her reasons, she wants to focus more on her family. Her departure, however, comes two months before President Trump's re-election hopes. This action now leaves President Trump without one of his most loyal and passionate spokespersons. Kellyanne Conway uh, was instrumental in getting President Trump to restart the White House briefings about the coronavirus outbreak. In a public feud with Kellyanne Conway's spouse last year, Mr. Trump called him a whack job and a husband from hell, prompting George Conway to say Trump was mentally unfit for his office. Meanwhile, Kellyanne Conway has uh, described her time in the administration and previously with the 2016 campaign 
as heady and quite humbling. Let's get more on this. Uh, the VOA's correspondent, Caroline Peruti, joins us from South Carolina. Uh, welcome to the well today. Well, thank you so much. I'm actually in Charlotte, North Carolina, right in front of the convention center where the president is actually speaking right now. He just arrived at the convention center and is speaking to the 336 delegates inside. Right. So, you know, what's the mood right now in the White House with all these uh, controversy with the Kellyanne's uh, resignation? And, you know, what's the president, what is he saying about this? Well, as you know, controversy is not uh, unknown in the Trump White House, nor any White House for that matter. But right now, President Trump is speaking about the next four years. He's talking to all of his supporters inside the convention center, of course, and he's saying, this is what we need to do. This is what we must do. And he's getting them excited. He's kind of rallying his to chant four more years. Let me show you where we are because uh, let me just get your bearings here. We are in front of an enormous security barrier around the convention. The convention center is a week behind me. Or, I'm sorry, that week, a block behind me, uh, beyond that extensive metal fence. That is where the motorcade came to, what, about maybe 10 minutes ago. President Trump walked inside and addressing the crowd. Now, as you know, COVID has certainly changed things for this convention. There are only delegates per state, per territory. Usually there are about 2,500 inside there and thousands of people on the streets around here. Hardly anyone is around us, no vendors, no anything. And in fact, the delegates be tested before they left their state. They had to be tested when they arrived in North Carolina, and they're carrying little monitoring devices that will tell them if they have been around anyone who comes down with COVID. They're, they're tracking devices next to their identification tags. So, Caroline, what do we expect, you know, the Republican um, convention to be like? What do we expect to hear from uh, the Trump team? Right. After Trump finishes, they, the delegates themselves will finish their what's called a roll call. So every state will be called on all 50 states and they'll have to state whether or not they want Trump as their nominee. And of course, it will be unanimous. He is our president now. He will be the nominee from the Republican Party for the election 2020 for re-election for him. Following that, that's the only thing that we have in person for this convention. After tonight, after today, rather, it becomes virtual. Tonight, there'll be something taped that Americans uh, could choose to watch. And then every night this week, there will be more of the virtual convention. It will end on Thursday with President Trump accepting the nomination from the White House. All 336 delegates inside the convention hall there are invited to hear him give that speech in person in Washington, D.C. Right. So let's talk about, uh, you know, the uh one of President Trump's most loyal uh, spokespersons, you know, leaving uh, at the end of the month in just about a week, I, I believe, from today. I mean, how is he taking this? How will this affect his campaign going forward? You know, that was kind of a rocky relationship, um, uh, if you will. I mean, uh, you even mentioned that her husband um, spoke badly about the president. And so I'm not surprised that she wants to take off time to be with her family. Uh, that seems to be the case for a lot of people. Remember, when you work in the White House, it's, it's intense, right? So everybody needs a break from time to time. I don't know her personal reasons. I haven't spoken to Kellyanne Conway in person, so I can't speak for that. So you have to take it at what, the, what she releasing publicly, and that's basically that she needs to spend more time with her family. All right, thank you so much for your thoughts on that, Caroline Presuti, speaking to us from uh, North Carolina there. My pleasure. Well, still to come on The World Today. There you have it, a Santa's school and Santa's going in to prepare for the end of the year.
Welcome back to the world today. The protests are back in the United States, this time in the city of Kenosh in Wisconsin. People were protesting the shooting of a reportedly unarmed black man prompting officials to impose a curfew. Identified by the state's governor, Tony Evers, as Jacob Blake, the victim was hospitalized in a serious condition on Sunday evening after police shot him multiple times. The shooting happened at around 5 p.m. local time in Kenosh as officers were responding to a domestic incident. The victim was immediately taken to a hospital by the police, according to a statement issued by the uh, police department. No further explanation was given by the police as to what led to the shooting in the first place. In the meantime, more than nine people have been killed and dozens wounded, among them soldiers and civilians, after a bombing in a town on the rest of southern Philippines island. Two explosions believed to be homemade bombs were triggered within an hour each of each other in the main urban center on the island of Jolo, a stronghold of the Abu Shahaf, a militant group that has pledged allegiance to the Islamic State. Authorities say that the bomb was attached to a parked motorcycle. There's no immediate claim of responsibility and police say an investigation is underway. Well, convicted of corruption less than a month ago and sentenced to 12 years in jail, Former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak is back campaigning for a party candidate over the weekend in a by-election for a state assembly seat. Out on bail, Najib is waiting for his appeal date to be set while standing accused in two other trials and waiting for two more to begin, mostly linked to the looting of billions of dollars from defunct sovereign fund One Malaysia Development Despite all that baggage, his party, the United Malays National Organization and its ethnic Chinese and Indian party allies invited Najib to be their star campaigner for a by-election this month in Slim District, about 90 minutes north of the capital, Kuala Lumpur. He was voted out of office in 2018 amid outrage over the 1MDB scandal, but since then he has undergone a public relations makeover to shed his image as a blue-blooded member of the elite and broaden his appeal to ordinary Malays. And to other news, prosecutors in New Zealand today told a court that Christchurch mosque shooter Brenton Tarrant had meticulously planned his March 15th 2019 attacks which claimed 51 lives. Crown Prosecutor Barnaby Hawes said Tarrant told police that he wanted to create fear among the small Muslim minority in New Zealand. Tarrant has also expressed intention to attack other mosques in the country before deciding on Christchurch. The hearings have been adjourned until Tuesday, August the 25th. I constantly try to imagine how my beloved Atta felt at the moment of the attack, how he faced the shooter with his chest armed only with his courage to protect others. What was in his mind when he realized he is departing this life to his last journey? How is life going to be without him being around? I can't forgive you. You gave yourself the authority to take the souls of 51 innocent people. Their only crime in your eyes is being Muslims. You injured 49 and shattered the dreams of so many innocent people. You wedded 32 wives and two husbands. You orphaned 51 children under 18 years old and 19 over, 80, over, 
18 years old, you terrorized the whole New Zealand and saddened the whole world. You killed your own humanity. And I don't think the world will forgive you for your horrible crime against humanity. Well, families of those killed at shootings at the two Christchurch mosques in 2019 gave emotional victim impact statements to the court as part of the sentencing hearing for the man who killed 51 people. Maysun Salama, speaking just meters away from Brenton Tyrant, said she constantly wondered what her son was thinking in his last moments, armed only with his courage after he was gunned down at the Al Nur Mosque on March 15th last year. Australian national Brenton Tarrant, 29, has pleaded guilty to the 51 murders, 40 attempted murders, and one charge of committing a terrorist act during the shooting rampage in the city of Christchurch, which he live-streamed on Facebook. Well, to a lighter story, making sure Christmas can go ahead as usual. Santas in the United Kingdom have had a training lesson to learn how they can make traditional grotos COVID safe this year. Entertainment company Ministry of Fun has been running Santa school for 25 years. And this Good year, they decided to get everyone to together even earlier than normal to reassure their clients and the public that it's possible to make the experience safe during the coronavirus pandemic. James Lovell, who founded the organization and ran the training event in central London on Monday, explained that there are three key changes they have put in place. One performer dressed as Santa said they were ready to wear their festive masks. We wear them to make sure everyone's nice and safe. We have to be a bit distant from the children and also the grown-ups too. Don't forget they're here as well. But the fun and the joy and the love and, of course, the magic will never change and has never changed. It will never change. I'm looking at three ways, three very simple ways to tweak the Christmas Grotto experience to make it safe. First of all, masks. So we've created these masks, which, as you can see, they're red velvet with white fur trim, just like Santa's costume. We've made a feature of a mask, and I think a child will feel comfortable with that, because I think we underestimate just how used to to masks we all are. Secondly, there's the social distance grotto. So it's moving the furniture around slightly so that um, Santa and the child are slightly further apart. Very easy to do. And um, to make a child two metres away from Santa does not in any way take away from the magic. As long as you do it beautifully and make it look great, it should be absolutely fine. And we can obviously advise with that. And then thirdly is the giving the present. At the end of every meeting with a child, Santa gives children a present. And uh, we need to make sure that can be done without Santa actually having to hand the present to the child. So we've created an ingenious method using a sleigh in which Santa puts the present on a sleigh. The child pulls a little string and pulls their present towards them. Is that Sophie? Yeah. My word, how you've grown this year. My word, last year you were this tall and that, and you're this tall. My word, why did you see? Well, keeping the festivities alive while well, the spirit of the festivities. Well, that's it on The World Today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jocka Rogers. Bye for now.